this is a very hardy problem here that will take us a little bit of time, but you will learn how to do a, do a cross product, cross product from this problem. So um, right now we have three random points in space, A, B, and C. You can see their numbers right there. We want to find an equation for the plane that passes through these three points and find the area of the triangle determined by these three points. Okay, so let's think about what we know. If I have three points, here's A. Let's just think about geometry for a second, like the actual, what they're going to look like in space. Here's A, B, and C. I know how to find a vector between those two, and I know how to find a vector between those two. Now, I want an equation for the plane that passes through these three points. So these are actually all sitting on one plane. Um, let's see if I can get the plane in the background here. They're all sitting on one plane. And if I can find that vector there and that vector there and I cross them, I will get a vector perpendicular to both and hence also perpendicular to the plane. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So what is our steps? We need to find the vector AB. We need to find the vector AC. And then we got to cross them to get the vector that's pointing up here. So this vector right here will be AB cross AC. Now, honestly, people, you can, you know, find the vector between C and B and C and A. It doesn't matter because all the vectors will lie in the plane and their cross product will be this vertical one. So if you want to try something different, you can use two different vectors than, than what I used. I don't care. It's all going to work out the same. It's pretty cool. So if I want to find the vector AB, um, I'm going from A to B. So B has got to be subtracted first. So here's my numbers. So I have to do 3 minus negative 1 I plus 2 minus 3J plus... 4 minus 0 K. So what does that give me? That gives me 4 I minus 1 J and 4 K. Whoop, 4 K. Great. Then for AC, um, C is the two point, so that goes first. So it's going to be 1 minus negative 1i plus negative 1 minus 3j plus 5 minus 0k. What does that give me? That gives me um, um, 2i minus 4j and 5k. Great. Now, because I'm looking for an equation for the plane that passes through these three points. Now, why do I care about the normal vector? I care about the normal vector because if I use that as the coefficients for x, y, and z, I can come up with my plane. So it's kind of the reverse of what we did in that very first problem after we did dot product. It's the reverse. So here's my two vectors, and let's do the cross product. We haven't done this yet. So uh, this is going to be your little lesson on how to do that goofy formula I showed you. So I, J, K, and because A, B is first, I put that in the next row, and then A, C is next. Now there is actually a formula in the book, and now if you're good at memorizing formulas, go ahead and memorize it, but I like this one because it's just kind of neat. So if I want to calculate this determinant, this is what I need to do. I have to think my I component, so I, I circle the I component and I cross out that row or that column in that row. And that leaves me with these four numbers. So I'm going to have to find the determinant of minus 1, 4, minus 4, 5. Cross out the column and the row. It leaves you with those four numbers that you want to find the determinant of. Then it's always minus. J, so plus, minus, plus, 
plus minus plus. Now that's a linear algebra thing. Uh, if you had linear algebra, you'll know why it changes sign, but right now just trust it. So I take out the first row and the middle column where j is, and that's a determinant I want to find next. 4, 2, 4, 5. And then add k times its determinant. So I want to take off this row, or this column in that row, and that's the determinant, 4 minus 1, 2 minus 4. Now, if there's anything that's going to happen when you do this, it's you're going to make some sign error or some multiplication error. So just take your time. Don't freak out. So um, we have to find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. How do I do that? So if I want to do that, let's see, let's make a little note down here. The determinant of a, come on, new paper. The determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, to remind you, is A times D minus C times B. So A times D minus C times B. Okay, that's just a reminder. So if I come back up here, I have to do I times negative 1 times 5 minus negative 4 times 4. What is that, negative 16? Minus J, same thing, 4 times 5 minus 2 times 4. Plus K, same thing, 4 times negative 4 minus 2 times negative 1. And I always put the negatives in here, people. Don't, don't be too crazy with uh, doing stuff in your head. So I have minus 5 plus 16, so that should give me 11I. And you have 20 minus 8, so that's minus 12J. And then here I have negative 16 plus 2, so that should be, is that right? Negative 16 minus a minus 2. Okay, I think that's right. So negative 16 plus 2 gives me negative 14. I'm getting a different number than on my practice run, but hopefully it, it looks the same. Negative 16 minus minus 2. Yeah, that works. All right, so there, this vector here, AB cross AC, this vector right here is the vector that's normal right here. Okay, now if we think back to the previous work that we did, let me see if I can find it really quick. Yeah, so we learned this right here. If I write my plane like this, that's a vector that's normal. Well, right now we have this, and we want to go back to this. So I just take the ij's and k's and make it the coefficient of x, y, and z. And then that's still an unknown, but we can solve for that. So that means that here my plane will be 11x minus 12y minus 14z equals some constant, I don't know. But in mathematics, if we have an unknown constant we in a function or a relationship or an equation, whatever you want to call it, we just have to take one of the ordered pairs that we know lies on the plane and then solve for C. Ah, and we have three ordered pairs that lie on the plane. So let's just choose one, plug it in, and see if it works. So down here, we're going to plug in point A because it's got a zero in it. It doesn't matter which one you do. It'll turn out the same. So if you don't want to use A, use B or C and see if it turns out the same. So it'll be 11 times minus 1 plus 12 times 3 minus 14 times 0. That's supposed to give me my letter C. So I have minus 11 plus 36 minus zero equals C. So what does that give me? That gives me six minus one is five, three minus one is two, so C is 25. So then my final plane is 11X minus 12Y minus 14Z equals 25. Now, 
we have not finished the problem yet. It also says We have found the equation that passes through these three points, and now we want to find the area of the triangle determined by these three points. Okay, so now again, this is what we're going to try to do. We have the three points, A, B, and C. And we've created our vectors. Okay, and now we want to see to find the area of that triangle right there. Okay, that's what we want. Now I'm going to say that's going to be half of the area of the parallelogram. Right? Remember the area of the parallelogram is part of the cross product. Right down here. So we need the magnitude of V, magnitude of W, sine of theta. And divide that by 2 and that gives me the triangle. So in this case, we need three things. We need the magnitude of AB, we need the magnitude of AC, and we need the angle between the two. So we find the angle between the two by doing the dot product. So we got a little bit of work to do before we get done with this problem. It's not hard though, it's not really hard work. So let's find these magnitudes. Um, here's our vectors, A, B, A, C. So I just got to square each of these. So 4 squared minus 1 squared, 4 squared. 4 squared minus 1 squared, 4 squared. And then for A, C, 2 squared minus 4 squared, 5 squared. 2 squared minus 4 squared, 5 squared, and that wasn't too hard. So let's do the math here. So that's going to be 16 and 16 is 32 plus 1 is 33. And here I have 4 plus 16 is 20 plus 25. Let me see if I'm getting these same numbers here. Yeah, I think I am. Okay, so I, I'm going to use a calculator here because I don't trust myself. So I've got uh, 4 plus 16 plus 25. 4 plus 16 plus 25 should give me 45. Yep. See, I don't trust myself. That's why we have calculators. Square root of 45. So the finding the angle between them, this is a little bit of work, but that's okay. I need to do a b dot a c. So that's going to be, let's see, I know those are the first components. So this is going to be 4 times 2 plus negative 1 times negative 4 plus 4 times 5. That's my dot product. That's going to be 8 plus 4 plus 20. 8 plus 4 plus 20, 32. All right, continuing on, I know that uh, according to my formulas, that this formula and the formula from the dot product are equal. So these two formulas are equal. So that means that if I have this number, I can set it equal to that number. So I, this number is 32. I have those two numbers. The only number I don't have is theta. So I know that 32 will equal the magnitude of AB times the magnitude of AC times the cosine of theta. Let's separate this guy and cross him out. Continuing on here. What's 33 times 45? A lovely 1485. So I have 32 equals the square root of 1485 times cosine of theta. Solving for cosine of theta, I have 32 over square root of 1485. I'm running out of room. Right, let's see if I can have a scratch sheet of paper here. 
if I continue on down here, theta is equal to the cosine inverse of 32 over square root of 1485. Now don't panic. You know, just follow your nose, follow the algebra that goes along with it, and let's see what happens. So I take my trusty machine and I do the cosine inverse of 32 divided by the square root of 1485. And that gives me 33.8603 degrees. 33.8603. Now, how do I know it's degrees? Well, um, the cosine inverse isn't going to be anything bigger than, let me think, uh, not 33 radians. That doesn't make any sense. So, so let me check my mode. Yeah, I'm in degree mode, so that's degrees. So the angle between these two vectors is 33.8603. All right. Now that I know that, let me mark that up here. Theta equals 33.8603. Now we can finally come down to nuts and bolts here. I know that... That's the area of the parallelogram. So I got to multiply those two magnitudes and the sine of 33 degrees. And then half of that is the area of the triangle. So that's going to equal the magnitude of AB times the magnitude of AC times the sine of my angle, 33.8603 degrees. Make sure you're in degree mode when you do this. And then I got to multiply this whole thing by one half to get the triangle. So let's just do this number and round it to four decimal places. So square root of 33, square root of 45, sine of 33.8603, whole thing, times one half. Or divide by 2, it doesn't matter. I'm going to times by 1 half because that's what I want to do. So I get 10.7355. Now what unit of measure, let me divide this off a little bit. What unit of measure should I choose? Well, it's area, so it'll be units squared. Now that was a long problem, but again, it has a lot of ideas. We uh, learned how to do the cross product. We learned how to utilize it to create a plane, how to use the, the plane, point on a plane to find a constant. We learned how to utilize the dot product, cross product, area parallelogram all together in one big giant problem. So let's make sure we finished it. So you're given these three points, find an equation for the plane that passes through these three points. We did find the area of the triangle, not the parallelogram determined by these three points. So in other words, we didn't do the whole parallelogram, just half of it. All right, that was a tough problem. I hope you were able to follow.